Good morning, everybody. I'm Esther. Welcome back to my homestead. I am really excited. I have a surprise video that I hadn't planned on making, um, but I, I get, I love this. I get text questions by my friends all the time about gardening. I mean, anything from what do I plant or how do I save this plant or how do I start it just every kind of question you can imagine. So that's what happened last night and I'm super excited. Um, one of my friends texted me last night and said, how do I start an herb garden? Like give me all the information. Like what's your favorite book? And I realized I do not have a favorite book for specifically for herb gardening. Um, now I have a ton of garden books. Don't get me wrong. Um, but I don't have like any specific book just on herb, uh, growing and use. There's, it's just such a broad topic. So I thought I would put together a video on how you can start your own herb garden and where do we begin? So Let's just cover the topic real quick. And then I have four, I've kind of broken it down into four areas for you guys um, so that you can plant what works best for you. So real quick, let's cover the book part. So basically any, like this is a homesteader book. It has a ton of herb information in it. Um, it talk, it just tells you like the herb and the soil and care and harvesting. Okay. This is a, uh, homesteader encyclopedia and it has herbal remedy information. Um, and also some growing things. This is a, just a garden book and it has a section on herbs back here. Um, you know, and different ones and they're growing information. So just to make it super easy for you guys, Probably any garden book that you're going to pick up is going to have a section on herbs. So you can go ahead and browse through that. Um, but here's what's really great is almost all herbs can use any kind of soil. They're really, really not picky. Um, so what I usually say is, it, yes, you can grow herbs in really crummy soil and it's not going to matter. But if you add some compost, they are going to grow better. They can, most herbs can grow in really dry soil, but if you water them, they'll be better. Um, they'll taste better and, uh, yeah. Um, and then, and then lastly, uh, most herbs do like sun. So uh, some of them, of course, it, it's just, it's going to depend on what you want to grow, but for the most part, they can handle nice sunny spot and they can also handle shade. So, uh, you know, they're, they're really not picky. So that, so let's just get that out of the way. Growing herbs is really, really, really easy. Um, okay. Now let's talk about, you see my trusty seeds in the background here. I have pulled out a couple of different selections here and we'll talk about those in just a sec. Um, first you're going to want to consider the function of your herb garden. So let's say you have, um, either no garden or an existing veggie garden that you'd like to set aside some space to put a brand new herb garden into. Um, where do you even begin? What, what do you plant and how do you even find out what you want to plant? Um, I will be right back. I'm going to grab a, a seed catalog. Okay. A seed catalog is a really great place to get some inspiration. So you can go like, this is the Baker Creek whole seed catalog. This one's a couple years old. Um, but if all you're looking for is inspiration, then it doesn't matter if, if it's old or not. So if you flip back to this section, there's a whole section on herbs in this book. Um, and you can just flip through it and um, kind of ask yourself what looks good, what's pretty, what what do you think you would use the most? Um, you know, what, what kind of catches your eye? Um, and then you're gonna start reading the descriptions. Okay, 
we're back. Yep. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, then you're going to start reading the descriptions. So there might be things like lemongrass, for example. If you're in the north, lemongrass is not going to be something that you're going to plant directly outside. Um, and it's not going to come back year after year, even if you did put it outside. So that's going to do better in a pot and, um, you know, in a greenhouse or under a tunnel or something like that. So you may not want to put that out in your garden. Um, something like basil, you can plant a section in your herb garden that has a room for annuals and you're going to plant it once and then it's going to die. It's not going to self sow. Um, so that space will be open up for another year to be able to, to grow something new. So, um, anyway, just flip through and kind of look for those things. Look for perennials, which means they're going to, you're going to plant them and they're going to come back. Um, so seed, seed catalog is a great place to start. So what I like to do is ask myself, what do I want to get out of my herb garden? Do I want to grow things I'm already using? So I will go to my uh, spice cupboard and say I use, um, if I'm making a lot of Italian dishes, you know, you're going to want things like oregano, uh, thyme, rosemary, cilantro, if you're making a lot of like Mexican type dishes, uh, basil, you know, so those are really great. And to kind of, to kind of start giving you an idea, um, perhaps your goal is to start a medicinal garden. Um, so you could start with things like echinacea, calendula, bee balm, and arnica and those are those are really great simple ones to grow um maybe your goal is to not even utilize your garden for a while at first but have the ability to utilize it later so you can plant things that not only self sow but are great for pollinators so like poppies you could grow edible poppies um not that you'd eat the plant, but the seeds, um, but these are going to attract pollinators or fennel, which is really great. It's a vegetable, it's an herb, and it also is amazing for the, um, pollinators. Now this one may or may not self sow in your garden. Um, and it is a biennial. So there's, there's that to consider. Um, dill will readily self sow up here in the North. Um, Probably it would self so anywhere I can imagine in the United States. Um, but this is great to use for an herb. If you like to can a lot and you like to can a lot of pickles, that would be a great place to start and the pollinators love it. Um, borage is really great. You can make tea out of it. It is a um, medicinal herb as well and the pollinators absolutely love it and it self sows. So there are so many options. Um, we could maybe, maybe you're already foraging for things out in the wild, but you want to make it easier on yourself. So you could plant things that readily grow in wild, which means they're going to grow really well in your garden. Um, <clears throat> but then your harvest time would be, sorry, my hair keeps tickling me. <laughs> Um, your, your harvest time would be cut down because you'd be able to just walk out of your door and, and go ahead and pick them whenever you want. So you could grow things like plantain, which grows, I can't imagine there's a place that it doesn't grow well here in the Northwest. So plantain, well, I pick these two varieties because this is variegated and this is purple. So not only can I use them for medicine or for salads, but I can also use them, uh, for bouquets. Uh, hawthorn, it, it does grow wild, um, here in the Northwest, but those varieties are not as amazing and they don't have as big of fruit. So you can plant your own, which might have a better fruit set, or you could take care of it better if it was in a closer location to your door and you'd be able to harvest those, especially before the birds. Birds really love hawthorn. Um, dandelion is another one. So this is actually grown throughout the world. Um, these are Japanese varieties, um, which are not, I mean, look how beautiful those are, but we use a lot of dandelion on our farm for the greens, for the flowers, for making wine, for making salve. You just, it, there's so many options. Um, 
So maybe that is what you're trying to do. Um, perhaps you want to grow a perennial garden. And so um, lavender would be a good option or lamb's ear, um, not lamb's quarter, which yes, that is that would grow as well. But this is lamb's ear. It's got big woolly leaves and they are great for band-aids. My kids love lamb's ear. Um, or Good King Henry, which is a perennial vegetable, or Lovage, which is also perennial. Um, so there's lots and lots and lots of ways you could go with this, and everybody's herb garden is going to be totally different. No one is going to have the same needs, whether it's um, culinary needs or medicinal needs or whatever. Um, your herb garden, make it personal to you. Um, the next thing that might help you dictate what plants you want to grow is location. So if you already have an existing herb garden or an existing garden that you'd like to put a new herb garden into, um, or an area that, that this is the only space I have, uh, you're going to want to look at that space. It, does it get full shade? Does it get full sun? Does it get something in between? Is it wet and soggy or is it really dry? Do you have the ability to water it or not? Um, you know, and so you're going to choose plants that would fit into what that already looks like. Um, of course, if you have poor soil, if it's clay or sand, adding organic matter to it is going to help tremendously. If it's a very dry area and you add a bunch of mulch to it, that's going to help retain moisture. If it's a very wet area, you can add more mulch to it and that will dry it out some. So you can change your soil, uh, of course, but to me, I like to stick with something of a perennial or sorry, uh, not perennial, but um, permaculture style gardening. And so that so you walk out and you observe the area. Um, so planting an herb garden this spring might not be something you want to do. You might want to wait until you know next spring or even the fall to get some plants started to give you time. I like to observe an area for at least a year um, just to kind of see what what plants already grow there, what how can I work with the landscape? Is there a slope to it or is it just totally flat or shaded? I like to watch the sun throughout the entire year. You don't have to do that. It just helps you to do less work if you do that. Um, so we've already talked about which plants, but how do you decide? Like, how do you know? So on the back of your packets or even um, within the catalogs, you're going to be looking for things um, like zone information. So if you're planting up here in the Midwest it's, or the Northwest, I mean, it's going to be, you know, zone four or five is going to be good for you. Uh, and that's going to, that tells you how low temperatures that plant can take. Um, you're going to look for things like, is this a perennial or an annual? Um, you know, so for us, growing basil. It, basil does very well here and we can harvest a lot of it in just a very short period of time, but I'm not going to expect this plant to come back. So if, if you are looking for something that is easy to take care of and you only have to plant once and you're done, you would not want to put basil in. Um, if your family, like a lot of people do not like cilantro. Um, so if your family doesn't like it, I would say don't grow it. Um, you maybe you want to start replacing things that you already use. So if you in your family uses Neosporin and you'd like to make something like a, a natural Neosporin, you could grow something like Comfrey or uh, Plantain, which have the medicinal benefits to heal cuts and things you would use that on. Um, and you know, that would be a good place to start. So, um, yeah, and you also want to look at the needs of the plant. Like, does it really like swampy areas or does it really like dry areas? Um, you know, the Mediterranean herbs really like sort of a sandy soil that's not high in uh, nutrient content. Like, thyme really thrives on <laughs> neglect. Um, and so does oregano. Oregano will really self-sow a lot in your garden if you'll let it up here. Um, and I would imagine this kind of takes over really wherever um, wherever you may be at. 
So that's something to think about. And lastly, um, how are you going to get plants? That is the real question. So once you've sorted out exactly what you want to grow and you've laid it out, um, you're going to make your garden plan. Um, then how are you going to get a hold of these plants that you want? So obviously a very easy way is to go to a seed catalog. Um, I like this company for, especially for medicinal herbs called Strictly Medicinal. Um, I had been ordering from a different company, which doesn't exist anymore. And they referred all of their customers over to the Strictly Medicinal. And this company has so many options. It is crazy. I like to grow really bizarre herbs. The more crazy, the better. Like, um, I can't think of an example right now, but <laughs> if I grow them, I'm going to use them. And so I just like to cover a very broad variety of, um, medicinal needs in our, for our family. Um, but if you're just starting out, I would definitely suggest going to your, um, your uh, herb cupboard, you know, wherever you keep your spices and things and just look, what do you use the most? Um, and start there and see if you can grow enough of that one herb or two or three herbs to provide for your family for the year. Um, because herbs are very giving. So the first year generally, especially with perennials, you're not going to harvest very much off of them, if anything at all. But after that, you could harvest, um, you know, more and more as the season goes or the, you know, the years go by. Um, so another, and you can use, you know, most veg vegetable catalogs have herbs in them. They're not going to have a lot and they're mostly going to be culinary herbs, but here's what's great. If you grow culinary herbs, they all, I can't think of one that doesn't. Um, oh, they also have medicinal properties like thyme and oregano are amazing. Um, for all kinds of medicinal uses. So, um, so the, so the, getting seeds is one way. And then the next way is a lot of perennial herbs actually don't start very well or very easily from seed. But if you can find somebody who already has them growing a friend or a neighbor or, um, you know, check it out on Facebook or something and um, join a garden group that's in your area. And a lot of times, especially perennials, in order to keep them healthy, you have to divide them. And so you can find someone who probably doesn't have space to have more plants. And so they're usually willing to just give them away. And if you can start them from a cutting or, uh, you know, a root clump or something like that, they're, they're going to get established in your garden a lot quicker. And that is honestly how a lot of my plants have been started. I might have seeds for a lot of things. Um, but I, if I don't have to start them from seed, I don't, my seeds are a lot of times just a backup or so that I can share with other people. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of my method on how to get going on an herb garden. I would love to know if you guys have more garden questions, um, if you have specific garden questions or specific um, herb gardening questions, please leave them in the comments. I love talking about gardening and answering questions for people. I love helping you guys get, get your own spaces growing. So I hope that this has helped you guys. I hope that this helps you to get a great herb garden start um, going. Um, if I think of any other books for basic herb gardening, um, I'll leave it in the description box. Um, yeah. Yeah. So thanks for joining me today. Um, I have another video coming out really soon. Um, it will either be tomorrow or just sometimes next week. Um, I will have it on starting some plants and we will be starting herbs. They can be started way early in the season. If you're up North here, that is really nice to get your hands in the dirt a little bit. So, um, yeah, I can't wait to hang out with you guys again. Thanks so much for joining me today. Uh, if you liked this video, I would love for you to hit the subscribe button um, and even turn on the notifications so that you don't miss any. And uh, we'll see you guys again soon.